one of Australia's leading scientists says humans are naive if they think they could be responsible for climate change. Professor Ian Plymer, a geologist from Adelaide University, says solar activity is the largest contributor to climate change. He says his research shows the radiation hitting the earth from the sun and what's actually happening underground is having more of an effect on the climate than human activity. Probably only contributes to about 0.1 percent of the global temperature. So what we are doing is having an extremely minor effect on the planet. Joining us now is climate change expert Ben McNeil. Ben, uh, thanks for your time. What's your response to suggestions that humans aren't playing a hand in global warming, that solar activity has more to do with it, as we've heard there? I think you um you really have just to have to look at the evidence. Um, sorry, is this me or Sharon? Uh, my name's Sharon. Hi, Sharon. <laughs> nice so, to meet you, Ben. Um, you have to look at the evidence. So, the the Professor Pilmer, he has to um, he is a mining geologist. He's not a climate scientist, or he's not even a paleoclimatologist, which which that's people who look at climate change in the past. Now. The report that was handed out um, to the global community a couple of months ago, the, Inter the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report, is a, is a report that, is, that gathers 2,500 climate scientists from around the world to, to look at the, uh, the latest scientific evidence for climate change. And what they're, what they're finding is, is four things that are irrefutable. Firstly, that obviously CO2 is a powerful greenhouse gas that traps heat from the sun. The second thing that they found, obviously, is that we have caused an increase in greenhouse gas, or CO2, that is carbon dioxide, of 30% over the last century. That's irrefutable. Now, um, the temperature, the other irrefutable facts are this. The temperature has risen 0.7 degrees over the last century, um, and nine of the ten hottest years have occurred in the last decade. Now, the, the last thing is that, is that what they found was essentially that if we continue to emit these very powerful gases which trap heat, billions and billions of tonnes of them, into the atmosphere, we will double our concentration of carbon dioxide uh, in the next 70 years, which will cause somewhere between, or depending on that concentration, somewhere between 2 degrees and 8 degrees warming global av globally averaged uh, in that time frame, which is a huge change. So the suggestion that that um, we are not causing or haven't, haven't the ability to cause huge climate alterations is just simply false. But Ben, the Earth experienced climate change long before humans. Is it not plausible that we really aren't that significant in the big picture? There's no doubt that, um, that we've, we have experienced vast climate changes before. Now, the paleoclimatology community have studied this in detail. Now, what they are saying, there's over the last... Um, 20 million years, carbon dioxide hasn't been higher than what it is today. But what they what they show um, when they go down to, for example, Antarctica and they measure um, uh, the carbon dioxide concentrations in ice cores, which can tell you what's been happening over time. And what they show is that the concentrations of carbon dioxide before human activity did um, went up and down. Now, also coupled with that, the the uh, there was changes to the solar activity, so that, that we have. The Earth goes around the sun and there's changes to our orbit, which changes climate as well. But what they found was that these two effects were the most important things driving huge climate alterations. Now, the sun, and the, the sun is very important, but just as important are the greenhouse gases. And they say about, it's about a 50-50 scenario. But let's talk about the time scale here. It's, it's a huge time scale we're talking about. We're talking about changes of three to five degrees over hundreds of thousands of years. What we are doing is, is changing the climate from two to eight degrees um, from the IPCC scenarios in a hundred years. So the rate of change is, is unprecedented in the climate history. So while we agree to disagree on, uh, on this matter, is the problem only going to get worse unless there is some uniform uh, approach to climate change? Yeah, absolutely. This is a global problem. Um, now, Australia can take a lead in, in, in trying to garner the international community to try and reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, and that's what 
the Kyoto Protocol does. And, they've, and I know that they're negotiating now for the next phase of the Kyoto process to try and reduce our emissions. Because obviously, uh, if we reduce our emissions in Australia, um, if we cut, a, cut them out tomorrow, we will only have a small impact on the atmosphere. Um, the, the, it has to be a global solution. Um, and that's why it's really important for us to be part of the global solution um, on a policy framework, in a policy framework. Then can I just put it to you very quickly that uh, Professor Plimmer has said that initiatives such as Earth Hour, where we recently were told to turn off our lights for, for one hour on a particular evening, were just a waste of time, a load of nonsense. What's your response? Oh, no, I, I think it's really great to, to, for, for, for Earth Hour like, um, to... Um, I think it's a, essentially it, it, it tries to it tries to garner support for what we we can do as a community. So, for example, every time we switch on on a, on, on the lights or the TV, we know that the the the, uh, the vast majority of the energy that that is garnered from that process goes um, uh, the carbon dioxide is emitted to the atmosphere. So, I think it's just a great awareness project in the sense that. We can uh, we can start to reduce um, our, our energy use, but I really I, I guess I want to take a different um, a, a different stance about Earth Hour. It's really about we don't we don't want um, people not to use energy. We just want to, we we should have the policies in place that our energy sources do not emit greenhouse gases, and so we can we can very much do that if we have a, a good direction in terms of government policy. Okay, Ben McNeil, thanks so much for your thoughts. Thanks. Well, let's see what you think using our Sky News poll via SMS, the web and on Sky News Active. We're asking the question, what camp are you in on climate change? Are you a believer or are you a sceptic? To vote, SMS the word vote and your choice to 1999-2444. From New Zealand, the number is simply 2444. 45% say they're believers, 55% say they're sceptical about uh, climate change and the role that humans play. You can also vote via our website, skynews.com.au or press red and vote on Sky News Active.